Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, Talking Kiki Stuff with me. First, I'd like to say um, thank you for everyone who uh, actually watched my Japan videos. I, you know, I was in Japan last month, and thank you for those who watched, liked, and subscribed to those video logs. And uh, yeah, appreciate that. So I'm back with uh, another movie, film review, my thoughts. And the review is of Warriors of the Future, uh, Hong Kong cinema released by Netflix uh, a few days ago. So I watched this a couple of days ago. It's only got time today to actually uh, do a video and talk about it. But before we start, I have to say there's be spoilers. So you have been warned everyone. Three, two, one, you've been warned. So this film has been in, I mean, in production for some time now. Um, I remember seeing this trailer, I think what, nearly two years ago, maybe two years ago. And I've always been a big fan of the two actors, uh, Louis Cowell and Sean Lau. If you're familiar with Hong Kong cinema, you've probably known the last, probably the last 10 years, them two have been in so many films together and almost kind of like play similar characters to one thing after the other. So the top actors in, in the country. And what got me first was, I mean, I'm a big sci-fi, if you watch a lot of my videos, you probably know that I'm a big sci-fi nerd. I love all that stuff. But what gets me even more hyped sometimes is watching Asian cinema where sci-fi has never been that good, especially Hong Kong and China, Chinese films. I mean, we do great kind of martial art films, of course, uh, sword playing, fantasy, triads, no, those John Woo, Two Guns Blazing, uh, Three Kingdoms. We do great movies about those. But we never really kind of the hang of doing sci-fi movies i mean if anything all our sci-fi movies are quite either rubbish i mean we tried it back in the 80s with through your heart but they were fun movies but nothing too serious and there's a lot of, lot of reasons why which um i won't go into much detail that's uh, another talk for another video but um but i liked about this because the special effects actually looks really good um during the trailer and also one of the reasons I never liked uh, Asian sci-fi because I never liked the design sometimes, a lot of it. But this one, they got it down quite well. I like the vehicle designs. I like the tech design, the the suits, the robots. You know, you can, from the trailer alone, you can see there was a lot of um, homage to previous sci-fi movies. Uh, let me pause here and I totally forgot to do this. I tend to talk over the movie trailer. So <laughs> here you are. Bit of a movie trailer for you now. So anyway, back to the point. So that's what got my attention. Great designs, great vehicle design, great kind of weaponry design, the exoskeleton suit, the helicopters, you know, way out of Masamune Shiro, Ghost in the Shell. So that's what really got me. And then, you know, of course, watching the film, then I saw the runtime. It was like 100 minutes. I was like, wow, okay. That's less than two hours. I mean, in today's movie industry, especially for such a big film, sci-fi film, you're talking at least at least two hours. I mean, because there's a lot of cramming. I mean, if you're going to create this new world of how this world is become a dystopia, this kind of thing, you've got to kind of have like a lot of time really to squeeze that world in. So watching it and because I haven't read anything or watched any other reviews, I don't know the synopsis or anything like that. And, but of course, watching the trailer is something to do with rogue robots and some organic, in my mind, thinking biological created by humans. So I got most of it right, of course. So watching the film, it starts off actually really good. I was actually intrigued by some of the, I thought that's where the story is going. The first three or five minutes where the little flashback and you had a Lewis Cow uh, narrating and you can see him in his exosuit fighting rogue robots and it talks about how the world and governments are using technology and the technology is expanding so fast so rapidly that every government's using those technology for warfare military warfare instead of using good and because of that every government wants a piece of this wants a piece of that and war breaks out and uh, yeah you've got robots going rogue and and that's where you introduce the team with these exosuits and using extra no, the exosuit gives them extra abilities to fight robots. And I thought that's where the story is going to head into, where, you know, where the 
all these governments are fighting for supremacy over technology and so on. Then it talks about the how this has caused pollution, uh, the poor is getting poorer, you know, that kind of area. And then they talked about uh, how this new technology called Skynets were being developed to help prevent radiation and stop pollution. So I thought this was going in the right direction. I thought, oh, this is great. Using kind of um, what the government would probably do in the future is you now there'll be a whole major with Skynets from the Terminator series. So there's a little uh, nod to the Terminator series. And then out of the blue, uh, this is where the story takes a U-turn. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is that. And then the organic things, you know, biological weapons that went crazy. And you know, the governments all around the world got together and used their technology to stop this biological weapon that went rogue and saved the world. Right? That's in my initial plan. That's where my mind's heading. And then this meteor comes on lands, and then you find that is an alien, alien organic whatever it was. And this alien um, whatever it is has two sides. You know, it, it needs water to grow, expand. But at the same time, it helps the world pollution. It eats up the pollution. So it actually does mankind, humankind good. But the problem is, when it rains, it expands, and these vines are like city size, and it starts destroying the cities and, and wiping out whatever is in its path. So that suddenly takes a U turn. I was like, okay. And that's where I'm in, you know, where uh, I'm not, um, okay, I'll give it a chance. It could, you know, it could be good. And then you know, if, you, then you see the camera zoom into this kind of um, football stadium, where it become a temporary HQ for this um, tactical team <coughs> that lead, led by Luis Cow and um, Sean Now. Then the helicopters come down. Oh, speaking about helicopters, I do like the design. It's very um, reminiscent of um, Ghost in the Shell, Masamune Shiro designs. A little nod there as well. Then Colleen, uh, Colleen Lau, the ac actress, she plays a colonel comes with a scientist, briefs the team. The scientist has created this kind of a serum, a genome serum If you go into the heart of the, the organic plant or whatever it is. It will stop it from expanding once it touches water, but it's still got a benefit of absorbing the pollution of the world. So everyone's a winner. So that's the whole plot. They go to the, she goes, she's a colonel, she goes to the general, she's in charge of the, or in charge of this area to get his go ahead and also for him to authorize a bunch of robots to assist the operation. It's played by Nick Chan, another great actor. You can see he's got a lot of makeup on his nice bit older. He plays an older gentleman, probably somewhere around sixties. He looks battle worn and pissed off all the time. And he doesn't like the idea, but this is authorized by even higher ups than him. So he has to do the job and puts a chip into authorized robots. And then, of course, he mentions, oh, you know, this this will destroy my lifelong work of the Skynets. Instantly, I knew straight away he's going to sabotage the mission. You know, that chip he put in to activate the robots, he's going to go rogue and try to kill kill everyone and destroy the operation. So this film is not really set up to be like, who did it? What's the, what's the plot behind it? It doesn't have all that kind of sophistication in, in the story. So that's what happens. He goes in there and then... They set up the team, the helicopter goes in, and of course straight away I knew that all of them get, all of them are gonna die and leave with one, one helicopter they crash and then they go on foot. Very, very predictable. And uh, but as in saying that, there is no BS, you just go straight into it. The action scenes are really well done. And there's some really good camera shots where you follow like the punches, for example, like a Sean now where's this that exoscoop exoscoop and you fight these organic kind of bugs, which is not you no, know, I'll talk about it later on. The designs were okay. And um, one thing about this, I think, like I said, the tech designs are amazing, but the organic designs are pretty generic. Kind of like I said, tail two coins. And he comes in and Lewis, uh, not Lewis Cow, Sean now with his exo suit. He saves Lewis Cow from this bug creature. And you see he uses the axe and tries to slice these bugs in half. There's a scene where the camera follows his kind of arms and chops it. It kind of speeds up and slows down. I like that. I like that a lot. I like those action scenes, it's really good. So this is where it really felt because the film is so short. You don't have time to really, in a sci-fi movie, like you don't want to, you know, you need time to build up the world. 
how the world got to this. How did Nick Chan's character, the general, become so, um, I don't know, doesn't care. He just wants, he's willing to sacrifice millions of people because it makes no sense even if he succeeds in, and sabotages the mission and the organic, and he creates his uh, sky nets, the creature's still going to expand because it's going to rain and it expands, expands, it will destroy everything in its path. So he's going to destroy his sky nets as well. So it makes no sense for him to kind of sabotage the mission. So that was a bit stupid. And I would love to see a backstory why he comes to his conclusion and maybe a bit kind of unreasonable or maybe a bit unstable as well. And then Lewis Carroll causes a little flashback scene. You see he has a daughter who died from pollution or some sort of, some sort of reason. And they don't really talk too much about that. And then during the mission, one of his um, teammates were bleeding. So they rush into this abandoned hospital trying to find some metal kit to, to save him. So during the mission, he runs away and finds all these, uh, maybe a first aid kit or whatever it was. He comes across a little girl. It looks about six years old or something like that. And running away from this creature. So he saves her and instantly there's a bond, reminds him of, him, of his daughter, a bit of a you know, Ripley from Aliens. I was like, yeah, it's cool, you know, they show a little flashback of him and his daughter, but he didn't get enough of that to really kind of like, you know, he didn't really connect with that. That's why I didn't like it. And suddenly he's already become a father. Father, I'm going to adopt you straight away. Just looking at a girl, okay, he's going to adopt her and she's going to play a role or something like that. Uh, and then, of course, um, the mission goes crazy and then, Sean now I'm going I'm backtracking a little bit. Sean now is in the command center. They lost they lost um, um, radio frequency, so he goes there, helps him out. During uh, he goes to the city or the streets, he see one of his ex comrades, asks him to come and join and save um, the team. And there's a little flashback of how he got kind of was part of the team and and how he got fired. Like I said, the film had little flashbacks about these but wasn't long enough to flash out the relationships and the, and and as the audience you don't really feel anything you don't see that kind of brother the friendship you know the you know willing to sacrifice for each other i think it's because yeah um these actors are always in the film like i said earlier on these actors are if you watch hong kong cinema in the last 10 years They've been in so many films and they've been in films together as well. And I think in a way that the Chinese audience just looks at Louis Cow, Sean Lau and say, okay, we know who they are. They play very similar characters. Automatically, we don't need a backstory for the film because we know who they are already. Maybe they're relying on that. But if this is an international audience, it's a little bit different. So to, to kind of like end this review is, the story is not a strong point. If anything, it kind of jumps back and forth. Like I said earlier on, if they would have carried on with the kind of global problems with technology and how it's causing, you know, governments using it to one up each other, causing war, I, th I think that would have been a better story. Then you throw in aliens, you throw in this, you throw in that. If you're a fan of like past sci fi movies, you see there's a lot of homage. Um, Ghost in the Shell, some of the robots and they're, they're fighting like a tank with eight legs, just like in Ghost in the Shell. There's a scene where Luz Cow jumps on that and rips out the radio jammer. Very really reminiscent of um, Ghost in the Shell. Uh, the, the exosuit looks a lot like the Tom Cruise one from um, Edge of Tomorrow. Even some of the action scenes really looks like that as well. The Skynets, they talk about, of course, from um, Terminator, the relationship between the little girl and Lewis, Lewis Cow is uh, from Aliens. So there's a lot of homages to the um, classic sci-fi. I even think some of the setting reminds me of um, Battle Angel Alita a little bit as well. Because some of the stuff they use with the, they use a lot of guns, but some of the close combat they use, like, like machetes and axes. So some of the combat reminds me of uh, Battle Angel Alita. So you can definitely tell the, the filmmakers are fans of those films I mentioned earlier. But if you like action, this has a lot of action. That's really good action. Special effects for an Asian film is top notch. Um, story, like I said, non-existent, just go and watch this film and just watch it for the 
special effects and action. Relationship, you know, like I said, I think this is so targeted to the Asian audience that the audience already know these actors already, so we don't need no backstory. But from Western point of view, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah, so I will give this overall a 5.5 out of 10. Um, I love the action. It reminds me of a, a bit of like a video game as well. You know, this would make a good anime, uh, maybe a TV show if they got the budget. I would like to see a sequel as well because that's the ending kept it open. And it's on the ending, you see the space shoots and the spaceship they were using to, to, to go into space. I really love that design. I actually really like the design, the color scheme. And I thought, oh, wow, okay, I like the design. So props to whoever got the, the designer to design the, the mech and tech in this and really well done. And I, know, I actually liked it because the action, I like the actors. I'm looking, I would love to see a sequel. But the reason why I gave it, if anything, a below average film is because this could have been so much more. I mean, they could have spent another 20, 30 minutes to flush out the characters a little bit more, their relationship, the story behind it. And I just wish they would go in one direction. You know, if it's going to be aliens, it should have started from the beginning, you know, like an invasion or something like that. Or because, you know, it kind of, you know, it kind of tricked me thinking it's going to be like a global disaster where the government's got too greedy with tech or something like that. So, yeah. So thank you everyone for watching this and please do subscribe for more hoping you can stuff in the future. Until next time, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are. And please stay safe. Goodbye.